let's bow before the King. Amen. Our hearts are bowed before you, Lord. We don't want any distractions. We, we want to just say a word to you, Lord. A word of thanksgiving. A word of love. Of course, our love could never match your love for us. But we're here for a purpose, Lord. In fellowship with one another. And in fellowship with you, Lord. And we pray your blessing on this time of fellowship. That every heart and mind would be open to receive revelation knowledge of truth. As it is life applicable for each of us. And we can apply it to our lives so that we may grow in grace. We may grow in faith. We may grow in love. And it's to your glory, Lord. You said those who are called by your name, who you created for your glory. You formed us and you made us. And, uh, and so we thank you for that, Lord. Uh, bless this evening with everything that you know that we need, Lord, for a successful service to you and to one another. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, the notion of being a priest has been heavy on my heart recently. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to extend what I talked about and uh, gave it a uh, title, Priesthood Evangelism, which may seem like a contradiction in terms, but it's not at all. Yes. Oh, uh, Dan, Dan, we got any handouts left? Oh, no worries. Okay. Yeah, you got them? All right, thank you. Thanks, so. You're welcome, sir. Put you to work. <laughs> so, when we start, you know, it's, I was kind of passionate about this notion that we need to take on this identity as a priest, <clears throat> that it's real important that we absorb that into our personal ethos, our personal belief system. So I drafted a spiritual identity statement. And your identity in Christ is you are a spiritual creature living a spiritual existence as a priest in the royal priesthood, because scripture tells us so. And you've been placed in the natural realm according to God's perfect purpose, plan, and will to influence people and bear fruit that will last for the kingdom. Now that's, that's a mouthful, of course, and not something that's readily accommodated. But I want you to understand it's important to accept the idea and integrate into your belief system that you are a priest and start thinking that way. And let's go to the appropriate scripture here that tells us we are priests. 1 Peter 2 and 5, 2, 5 and 9. You're being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices and we've been over spiritual sacrifices before that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you, each and every one of us, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him. How many of us see ourselves that way? Amen. <laughs> this is the way we, you know, one of our problems is typically the way the vast majority of Christians see themselves, they self identify the same way the secular world does. I mean, when men get together, what's the first question they ask each other? <coughs> and where do you work? What do you do? Okay. 
So then for someone like Salvi, then all of a sudden he ostensibly would take on the idea, the identity of a plumber and everything goes wrong with that. There's certainly nothing wrong with being a plumber and we certainly need their talent and their skill and their expertise from time to time. And they perform a very valuable service. But that's not who you are. That is not who you are. You are a priest. You are in the royal priesthood. God's special possession. And this is the way we start, we need to start thinking about each other as far as self. You're part of an elite royal class sent by God to bear fruit that will last by planting the seeds of influence and change for the kingdom. Your light in the darkness. You're a fruit bearer who plants seeds of influence and change. And you make disciples when you do this. Wow. When you start planting the seeds in the way we're going to start talking about tonight. But we never, ever, ever forget your power to influence comes from your true submission to Jesus. Your 100% dedication to Jesus. And we've talked about that several times before. If you're 99% in, you're 100% out. <laughs> Okay, so there's got to be this 100% abandonment to the kingdom. <clears throat> Wait a minute, say that again. It's on your notes. You have to be right at the bottom. There has to be a 100% abandonment to the kingdom. Just throw yourself at Jesus' feet and say, put me where you want me. Do whatever you want to with me. Next page. See, because a hundred years from now, no one's going to remember you. You're either, you, hopefully, you might be a photograph on somebody's phone. You might be a photograph on a scrapbook. Does anybody keep scrapbooks anymore? There are people who do, and you know, they like to show them off, and they're quite nice. I mean, a lot of them are very creative and show a lot of talent. Kathy has a, a pillow at home from her parents' 50th anniversary that, she, that they were given. And Kathy wanted it after they both passed. And it sits proudly in our living room. Now, I don't know that Val is that attached to it, okay? Let's assume she is, and she wanted to, she's never indicated an interest in it. That's our youngest daughter. <laughs> she's never indicated a major interest in this thing. But the point is, at some point, that's going to be a nickel at a yard sale. That's what it's going to be. Or it's going to wind up getting thrown in the trash. That's what's going to happen to that. And that's what's going to happen to, again, like the Bible teaches, all these things we treasure so highly are going to go. They're going to be gone. But what will be remembered is who you influenced and who you changed. Who did God use you to change, to influence? You know, we've been sanctified, we've been declared holy and set aside for his use. That's the definition of sanctification. We've been commanded to make disciples and bear fruit for your life. And as part of being a priest, you got to remember, there is a plan for your life. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. There's a reason, a purpose, a will, and a way around your life. 
In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And like Esther came to understand after Mordecai had a chat with her and said, you know, you were put in this position for such a time as this. Do you really think that God, with all the things he has told us, that you were, you're here entirely by accident? You have a mission. You have a calling. There's a specific call on your life. Jeremiah 6.16 Stand at the crossroads and look. As for the ancient paths, and again, I pointed this out before, that word is not really translated right, which is one of the great things about the Bible, which gives us the proof that it comes from God, because they can still mistranslate stuff, and it hangs together. Still, no matter what. <clears throat> As for the eternal paths, which means from the dawn of time, there was a plan for your life. So ask where the good way is, walk in it, and you will have rest for your soul. You know, you abandon your life to God 100%. You let him put you where he wants you. And you do this by saying, okay, I'm yours. I don't know what's to happen. <laughs> and many times, he'll decide, okay... Nick, on Christmas Eve 2020, you're going into the hospital. And everybody's going to think you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> and six months later, you're going to walk out. You're going to, after three hospitals, you're going to go back home. Yeah. Everybody I, didn't believe it. Yeah, nobody believed it. Nobody no, believed, you know. No, but I you guys know. did. You guys did because you guys... I'll tell you what they did. We believe in miracles. But... Yeah, we believe in miracles. i got to tell you what they did. And I think this was Debbie's idea. Not once, but twice. In February, in the cold, they would gather at the hospital for an hour. Well, now what was that? And they would sing and praise and pray what they, I think you thought of you were under my window. You, yes. and you could very well have been. According to Kathy, that's what we were. Okay. But they did it because they had faith. Yes. They had faith that God was going to heal me. Yes. And he did. And the thing about it is, when you abandon your life to him, it's going to be better than anything you got in mind. Because it says you will have rest for your soul. You're going to have peace. Because he's going to flow purpose to you. As an aside. It's not in your notes. I. In Revelation. talks about the river of life. And the twelve fruit trees. Okay. And it talks about the water. Now water is very symbolic. I think that river of life is what keeps us alive, is what feeds us, is what takes care of us. But like the Bible also says, why in a different way? Why are you drinking from the wrong cisterns? Why are you drinking from the wrong cisterns? And I don't just mean the way scripture actually means it at that point. There's nothing better. I'm here to tell you. There's absolutely nothing better. You turn your life over 100% to Christ and you'd say, you know what, Lord, I repent. I'm done. I'm done. Let him have it. Third page. Okay, and we get resources. We get resources that we can use. Prayer. We thank Jesus daily that he has made us a priest. We're part of a royal elite class, and we pray blessing and shalom over others. Now, I was talking to Candy for the class. There's people who believe that, and I tend to be one of these, although I'm not sure it's as explicit as this. There's people who believe that when you 
pray blessing and shalom over others. It's essentially issuing a spiritual command. Now that might be a little out there, but I'm inclined to believe that depending on how it's done and depending on where you are with God, I tend to think it's true that God puts his power behind it. Amen. So we pray blessing, and so let me put it this way. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Absolutely. Amen. Well, I will say, when in James, I think it's James that says, the prayer, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, and it's not availing much in our power. Yeah, exactly. So. Thank you, Leo. Good point. God will make the time you need to influence others. If you're following that path, he will move heaven and earth to do what his purposes want, what his purposes are. As a priest, we reflect love. Now, I'm going to talk about somebody. Kathy made an uh, observation one night when we went to Mar. We used to go to Mar and Busey's church mm -hmm. prior to coming here. Let me tell you something. Does... Who else knows Marvin Busey? Oh, yes. That man walks in love. Yes, he does. He's an amazing man of God. He really is. And he just it exudes from him. Just exudes from him. So, you know, love is just a sincere and caring interest that we have in others. Um, I meet with a bunch of guys on Tuesdays and Thursdays, two different groups. And one of them was talking about, he started, got into and launched into the story that he had known this guy for years and years and years. They've been playing golf for years and years. And they tell, you know, he says, I've known this guy for I don't know how many years. And he said, I know. I know his kids are. I know where they went to college. I know where he does for I He says, I even know how much he makes. <clears throat> he says, there's a ton of information I know about this guy. He said, and we're real good friends, and we get together and play golf and all this. He said, I realize I had never witnessed to this man. And this is going back over 25 years. So we started kicking that around, and one of the other fellows, Paul, he said, well, you know, he said, one day, this is years ago, he's sitting there talking, shooting the breeze with a friend of his, and, you know, he just, this guy just eased right into it. He says, so, Paul, tell me your story. Tell me all about it. We had a nice conversation, me and Salvi, for, uh, while we were eating dinner. He says, Paul, tell me your story. Who's Paul? Tell me all about Paul. And he said he just kind of eased on into it and he started witnessing to him without even really realizing he was doing it. Yeah. He said it was so simple. It was so simple and so natural. But yet we get these preconceived notions in our heads. What are they going to think? What if he doesn't like me? What if he doesn't like the idea? And we ask ourselves question after question. We're going to talk about a little bit more about that. We have the resource of truth. We just share the truth of the word. We give money, time, and service. Now, the thing about giving is you got to reorient yourself how you think about giving money, time, and service. Because it's not, you're not giving. You're not giving. You're planting seeds for the kingdom. That's what you're doing when you give. You're planting seeds for the kingdom. Bless, bless giving as a way to plant seeds for growth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless this time I'm going to give today. It's yours. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless this day to you. It's yours. And in the spiritual realm, you're, you know, you're planting seeds 
for growth because that's going to return in some way you don't even you're not even dimly aware of. God's word is our main tool to understand truth and influence others. So we have that as a resource. We have wisdom. Wisdom in the Old Testament and he in the Old Testament times meant to master the art of living. And I find that a really cool way to look at it. Master the art of living. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God and to give generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But I forgot to put the other part in there. Don't doubt. Well, that doesn't make sense to me. And we've all been there. Well, that can't be right. Gee, I've never done that. And your expertise is your witness. That's your expertise. And the good witness tells exactly what they know. No more, no less. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. You don't have to come up with something very profound. You don't have to sound like you just recently won the Nobel Prize. Just tell what you know, which is what happened to you. Well, gee, Salvi, that's pretty impressive. I, you know, that's real interesting, Salvi, but you know what? This is where I was, and I just I had to turn to Christ. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. The power and the passion of your testimony will be communicated because it will be blessed. And then if you got some Bible knowledge that's applicable, go ahead and do it. You don't have to act like a, you're a seminary professor. Just tell what you know. We have final page. We have various tools. We pray blessing and shalom on others. We pray blessing and shalom on others. James tells us we never ever curse. Don't do that. You ask for the opportunities. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you will bring the opportunities today to influence <coughs> others for godly change. And you ask and pray for wisdom. And you ask them open-ended questions that convey a sincere interest. You get to know them. You get to know them. Brother Tim, how are you doing today? You having a pretty good day? Yeah, tell me how things are going. Understand you are the priest. And that's what you start telling you. You're the expert witness. And you tell what you know. And you, add, you tell yourself each and every day you're a priest. You're part of a royal elite class. Stop comparing yourselves to the rest of the world. Because no one really cares. The Holy Spirit is the one who will do the converting. Uh, this group I was telling you about, uh, there was a guy by the name of Greg, and he was talking about, you know, he said, we tend to walk around and look at people like they've got a salvation bullseye on their back. <laughs> you know, and we we got to hit it, right? That's not your job. Yeah. <laughs> Either your job is to plant seeds of growth. That's your job. The Holy, you know, you are just the tool being used by Jesus. Your personality and demeanor and your sincere interest in people will speak far louder than what you say. Speak far louder than what you say. Start... The way to start down this road is to start every day, thank him that he has made you a priest. 
Thank him that he has served me, you a priest. And you'll start thinking that way. And your life will start taking a completely different tone. You're not one of these guys that walks around with little black cassocks like the Catholic priests do. I had one guy who argued, I am not a priest. <laughs> yes, you are. Not that kind. Huh? Not that kind. He's, he's, he's turned himself completely around. He buys it now. But until you start telling yourself this, it's not going to happen. But this is the way you need to start thinking about yourself. You, Salvi, you're a priest. You're part of a royal elite class. And that's who you are. You give it, Joey. <laughs> start thinking that, start telling yourself this as often as you can. Because the more you tell it, the more you'll get through the thickness that's up here. And you'll start saying, you know what? I am a priest. By golly, I am a priest. Yeah. And you'll start at, and you'll start at, you'll start acting as good as Candace. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Preach it, sister. <laughs> Thank you very much. Psalm 461. You're welcome to sit or stand. It's entirely up to you. You can judge you if you sit. I'm just kidding. I, you know I say that every single time. Just kidding. Do as you feel led. No, no worries. And I didn't cough my voice away, but I'm going to attempt this one anyway. What, what song is it? Sorry, 461. Just a closer walk with thee. That's right. I need the words too, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Oh, good song. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I
Tonight we have a very, very special, two very special guests. I feel like I've known them for years. I think I have, but I didn't meet them until tonight. And uh, they are just what I thought, you know. They, anyway, and it's just really sweet fellowship anytime uh, we get to talk. And let's welcome Tim and Veronica Bratton. Thank you, Pastor. You can go eat you know, right through there and go up or around here and go up. It doesn't make any sense. Tim and Veronica Bratton, our ministry is called Crack Clay, building in a fair proof marriage God's way. Honey Bunch, I'm leaving. Oh, Adam, do you have to go? I was really hoping we could be together today. Well, it's the only thing I want to do, Sugar Bear, but I have to go name in the rest of the animals. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, you just think of some quick, simple names and hurry home, okay? Oh, I sure will, Sweet Pea. What you have planned for today, Pumpkin Boo? Well, I was going to make some dinner, and, you know, I'm so tired of vegetables. I thought I might chop up a delicious fruit pie. Oh, anything you make is so tempting, Sugar Bear, but I just don't want you to overexert those precious little fingers, Pumpkin. <laughs> I'll be careful, and I'll be counting the minutes until you return, Tiger. <laughs> Time just stands still when you're apart, we're apart. But the thought of you gives strength to my beating heart. Oh, Adam, you're so creative. I know it runs in the family. <laughs> well, until tonight. We'll be together in paradise. Eve, I'm home. Oh, hi, Adam. That's all I get is hi, Adam? Oh, I'm oh. sorry if I, if I seem tired. It's just so hot here. I really miss the cool of the garden. Oh, my feet are killing me. Oh, oh. Okay, oh. sit down. You poor baby. <laughs> okay, oh. tell me how your first day on the new job went. I think it went okay, but... I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing, though. What? You know who didn't show you the ropes? No. I didn't hear or see from him all day long. In fact, I thought maybe he was here with you. Oh, no. I think he was pretty perturbed at me last night. I don't think I'll be hearing from him for quite some time. No, he's not one to hold a grudge. Maybe you should, maybe should buy him over dinner or something. Oh, yes. I can make a, I can make a nice hot apple pie. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just let him take the initiative. <laughs> Maybe we'll just pop over for coffee or something. Well, I, sure I don't think he's one to hold a grudge. I sure hope he gives me some advance warning. I hate the way he just drops in unannounced. It is so inconsiderate. Shh! He might be listening. We don't want you to make him angry again. What do you mean, Mr. A. Adam? You don't want me to make him angry again. As I recall, I'm not the only one who was hungry for some apple delight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We don't want to make him angry again, especially not this soon. Well, I don't think he was really that bad anyway. I think he has an image to uphold with the animals and all, you know. You know, the head honcho has to remind everybody he's still the boss. E, please be quiet. Oh, Adam, relax. You are always so worried about what other people think. That's not true. It is. It is not. It is too. There's no one here but you and I. Well. Besides. If there were, you would care. Deny that. I never heard you complain one time like I was treating you up like the only person of face of the earth. Oh. Let me rephrase oh, that. No need. I, I, I can read between the lines. What you're saying is, if you had a choice, you might not have chosen me. I never meant well, to Well, let me tell you something, Mr. A. Conscientious. Just because you were the first man created doesn't make you the cream of the crop. You have your faults too, you know. 
And I suppose one comes to mind? Well, as a matter of fact, one does. I think last night, when I got in trouble, you didn't show much backbone. You were sure quick to point a finger. Oh, it's the woman you gave me that made me do it. I couldn't help it. Besides, it's the truth, you know. He has a way of getting that out of me. Well, <laughs> I have just seen a different side of you since B.A. B.A.? Before the apple, you uh, know, when there was nothing to protect me from, you sure were brave. But when the going got tough, you hid behind a bush. Well, excuse me, who made the going get tough? That's beside the point. Typical. Just like a woman. Avoid the real issue. Just like a woman? And how would you know what I'm like? I know you like I know my own rib. <gasps> I just knew you were going to hold that one over me one day. Well, the fact is the fact. Well, I have a fact for you. I think when he created you, he took a step back and he said, I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a part of you I never thought existed. I think you're jealous. Oh, what? Of me, of who I am, and you're not. <laughs> and what about you do I have to be jealous of? <laughs> My intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> you better get some more clothes on there, Eve. I think you're starting to catch a cold. <laughs> Besides, I was the one that, he asked me to name all the animals. Well, that's only because I wasn't around yet. And I wouldn't be too proud of some of those names if I were you. I thought you were quite original. Oh, right. Let's see. We have Bluebird, Blackbird, Brown Bear. Those are so creative. <laughs> <laughs> I dare to say you're feeling quite hostile tonight. I dare to say I feel like being alone tonight. I don't feel like being around you much either. Good. I'm going to go raise Cain. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're able. Uh, <laughs> enjoy your evening meal. I will. I made your favorite. What? Applesauce. Dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is all about, brother, and that is building a fair-proof marriage God's way. It's, I've, I've seen your pastor on this stage right here. I know he can preach. And, buddy, it's sure, sure good to see you, Dave. You too, we went to school together. Uh, I went to Liberty back in the day. People asked me back then if I graduated in the top half or bottom half. I tell people that I graduated in the half that made the top half possible. <laughs> I had to study really hard, right, brother? <laughs> that was me. But I, I'm often asked, I'm often asked how this older man met this beautiful woman. I have to be very honest. Because if I, if, if I don't tell the truth, I'm telling a story. I'm telling a lie. Whenever someone asks me that, I have to say, well... We bet we met when we were both married. The problem is we were married to someone else. How does that happen? How does that happen in a Christian church like this? My dad was a preacher. I went to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. For 50 years, though, I ran from Jesus as fast as my sin would carry me. That was my part. He got up and ran me down. That was his part. If we would pursue our spouse like Jesus pursues us, we might not be have that problem. Let's pray, shall we? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being here and these wonderful people who, are, who love you, Jesus. I just pray everybody here is a child of the King, Jesus. Thank you for my brother, David Cash. And, and what, a, what a joy it is to get to see him again. After all these years, Jesus, he's my brother in Christ. And I just want to fellowship with him and with you and with these wonderful people that are here, Jesus, that you will get all the glory, Jesus, of what I'm about to say. May everything I say be from you, not from Tim, but from you, Jesus. May we glorify you in everything we do, I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I 
think about things were so good in the Garden of Eden until Adam and Eve sinned. It was great, wasn't it? Sin wrecked everything. Genesis 3, it says, man's doubts, distorts, and defiles God's word, reducing it to an alternate viewpoint. That's what happened. He does the same lie today. What's wrong with that? Did he really say that? That's the doubt he puts in people. Um, where we're, when, we, when we do marriage the world's way, we have problems. Isn't that true? Every time I'm asked how this beautiful lady and I got together about to ask about my kids, or people ask me about my kids, and that's hard. I have to be transparent. What does transparent mean? I have to be honest. I had to tell people exactly what happened. Patients come to my office all the time and they, they'll, they'll say, how did you meet that woman? I had to be transparent about what I've done. i got five beautiful kids. It was my birthday about three weeks, ago, three weeks ago. Only one of my children, only one of my children contacted me on my birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. I was known as a great dad with my five kids. You can see me walk around the mall with all three of them on my shoulder, one on my back. But you know what I didn't do? What the kids need for most in my marriage is that I didn't put, I didn't, I didn't prioritize my marriage. I had other people, maybe work, maybe kids, but my wife way down below. Kids need us to love their mom. That's the most important thing we can do. Amen, brother? That's right. Jesus first. Spouse second. We have to pursue our spouse like Jesus pursues us. Amen? I just have to say, and what I'm going to say next is a little difficult for me to say, because I love my mom and dad. But I was, uh, I'm a preacher's kid. I was brought up in a preacher's kid home. And I love my mom and dad. They're both in heaven now. But as a preacher's kid, it's really important just to use what I'm going to say to remember how important this is. One of my parents talked the talk and walked the walk. One walked the walk, talked the talk, but didn't walk the walk. So remember when you're married to someone, kid, the children are watching. They're making sure. They're watching to see if you're really genuine born again. Do you just say it on Sunday morning, Wednesday night? Or do you live it when no one's watching? The kids are watching that. For 50 years I was a phony baloney in my dad's church. Oh, I, I taught Sunday school. I was a Sunday school superintendent. Good sized church. I knew everything what to say. I was a Christian here. But not a Christian in my heart. I knew all the rules. I, I, I I knew all the stuff to go by, but I was a genuine born again Christian. For 50 years I was that way. You can't have one parent living for Jesus and one person not. You can't do that. Make sure in your Christian life that you both walk the walk and talk the talk because the world's watching. Oh, yeah. Amen. They're watching and they can see right through it. Someone just, uh, my brother just said that. How important it is to be genuine born again Christian. And may people see that in everything you do or say. You know, in, in, uh, in the Galatians 5, 19, 21, the, the difference here between, uh, I just want to say, uh, in, in my, I was being raised, my family, my parents, not once, I love my mom and dad. I, I was kind of like my dad's, dad was kind of married to me. I love my dad. My dad was a great preacher in Cleveland, Ohio. A lot of people were in heaven because of my dad. I love him to death. I love you, dad. I'm going to see him one day with my Heavenly Father someday. But my dad walked the walk and talked the talk. But I never once saw my parents hold hands. Never once saw them embrace, tell me, encourage each other. Kids, go on a date. Go on a romantic, get them. Never saw it. So when I was, when I became Christian, the first thing I want to do is I want to hug my wife and kiss her 
and be that because I didn't have a good way of I didn't have a good way of being that way. And because in Galatians 5, 19 and 21, you want to read that real quick, sweetheart? Pumpkin. Galatians 5, 19, 21. This is the ways of the flesh. And this is the way that we do things without Jesus inside of us. And you can always tell a difference, can't we? Galatians 5, 19 and 21. Sweetheart. Okay, thanks, um, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, and it wants to be impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. We may be forgiven like David was, but forgiveness often does not remove the consequences yeah. of sin. We don't talk about that enough. There's consequences of sin. I got five precious little, precious children who I love to death. I rarely see them because of consequences of sin. When I was in, the, I lost a lot of my vision. I was, I was going to work, and, and uh, there was a, a, a black shield that came around my eye, and, and I had a, uh, it, I waited too long to get the hospital, waited too long to get the, uh, to detach retina, and when, by the time it got there, it got past the retina, so I couldn't see very good. I'm really blind in this eye. It happened again a year later while I'm in the car. They had to put... They, they, they put oil in it and gas, and that didn't work. So they had to put a little a belt buckle. There's a belt buckle around both my eyes just to keep them intact. Jesus did that for a reason. I, I really believe he did it for a reason. So I can, so he, he, I know Jesus is there watching me. Jesus is watching me. He wants to make sure I do this Christianity thing after I gave my life to Jesus 17 years ago. After 50 years of running, from him as fast as my sin would carry me. It's so important to marry someone who thanks God for you and not someone who takes God away from you. Right. Amen. Amen. We have to we have to really we have to make sure that we generally know Jesus as our personal savior. It's so easy to go through the motions, isn't it? God can only bless your marriage if he is part of your marriage. No person can feel that God sized vacuum. That only So if Jesus is not in the middle of it, if you don't invite him in, then you are on your own. That's not going to work, right, brother? No. If, if we look to our spouse to fill us, the, the only way God can do, we are creating an impossibility. Our spouse cannot do it. So what should a Christian marriage look like? How should a Christian husband be? Well, marriage was created by God, instituted by Him, to reflect His own relationship. His own relationship, not only between Christ and the church, but also within the Trinity. What a, for the way God loved us is how we should love our spouse. Right? We have the opportunity, we have an opportunity in church to be a great example to the lost, by having godly marriages. That's right. Well, that's what changed me. When I finally got saved. Oh, that's the greatest day of my life. 16 years ago in my car. It wasn't even in my dad's church or any other church. I got saved in my car going to work. But we have an opportunity, church, to be a great example to the lost by how we treat our, our spouse. The, the world is watching that, aren't they? The world is watching us. They want to see if we're really different. I want to see if my dad was really different. I want to watch everybody in my dad's church, the deacons. I watch them when no one was looking. I want to see if they were genuine. That's what spoke to me when I when I saw someone being the same way. That's that's true genuineness to me. Um, back to that Bible verse here, uh, guys, honey, sweetie, Galatians six, seven, and nine, baby. Galatians 6, 7 to 9. Yeah. 6, 7 to 9. Sweetie, 
right? We'll go to Ephesians later. What, Galatians 6? Yeah, six, this is a powerful verse here. And don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. Six, seven, nine. Galatians 6, six seven, 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 nine. nine. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, you, you will always harvest what you plant. Read what you sow. Right. Those who live only to satisfy their own <laughs> sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we'll reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Amen. And then, sweetheart, Galatians 5, 22, 23. This is what the Holy Spirit does to you. Because when we invite Jesus in our heart, it's no longer the flesh. The Holy the Spirit flesh. produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have nailed their passions and desires of their simple natures to his cross and have crucified them. Amen. Amen. Husbands are called to lay down their lives for their wife, just as Christ has done that this life for the church. Wives are called to submit to their husbands, just as Christ submitted to the will of the Father. You know, people ask me, you know, before I got saved and all that stuff, and people would go, you know, this is this is my fourth wife. Wow, your fourth wife. Well, what happened to your first one? I said, well, she died eating poison mushrooms. They go, that's terrible. What happened to your second wife? And she died from eating poison mushrooms. Well, what happened to your third wife? I said, well, she died from a blow to the head. They go, that's terrible. What happened? So I said, she wouldn't eat her mushrooms. <laughs> See, I had to have humor like that because humor like that really helps deflect instead of being honest and truthful because we have to be honest. We have to be honest with our sin. We come before Jesus and we are, we are, we are naked in front of Jesus. We need Jesus, don't we? Yes, we do. Because he requires sacrifice. Because both of these acts require self-sacrifice, not self-centeredness. My first three mar marriage was all about Timothy Brat. All about Tim. What could she do for me? When I gave my life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit came to my heart and, and filled, my, filled me up with the power of the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Well, I want to... How does a man lead his wife's God's way? How do we live our how do we live our wives more than our how do we love our wives more than our flesh? Right? Amen. Be a student of each other. What are your spouse needs and love languages? Do you know how you know that? Ask them. Ask them. What's your spouse's love language? What's your spouse's need? Every morning we wake up at 7 o'clock and we do two things. Number one, we read the Bible together. Grab your wife, take her to the couch, pray with her, read the Bible with her. Man, that's a that's a turn on. My wife loves that. That's how we get that we we talk about what's really important. We invite Jesus into our marriage every morning. That's how we do it. Talking about Jesus. After that, we work out together. But we do that every morning. Be a student of each other. What are your spouse's needs and love language? My wife's Needs are, I'm going to tell you my wife's five biggest needs. It's my job as a husband, with the help of Jesus, to meet them. I want to meet my wife's five biggest needs. Her, her number one need is affection. I have to be affectionate to my sweetie. I want to love on her. I want my kids to see me love on her. I want her kids to see me love on her. I want people in our life group, people at church, but my patients at work. I want to love. I want them to see that. Uh, number two, honesty and openness. Very important. Isn't it? We all have needs. I've seen so many affairs in churches that happen one inch at a time. We justify sin. What's wrong with that? I can just see Phil Donahue saying that. Remember back in the day. What's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that? You're giving in the sin one inch at a time. 
I remember my dad's church, there, there, there was this popular evangelist that came every year. Well, he preached the gospel. People got saved. All of a sudden this year, I said, Dad, when's, when's this, uh, Ron King coming? I miss him, Dad. He, he was a baseball fan. We used to watch baseball to get up to the service. He goes, he fell. I said, what do you mean he fell? I was just a kid. He fell into sin. He fell into sin. One inch at a time. My, my uh, mother wife thing. She likes, uh, uh, honestly and openness, financial stability. She wants me to work. I have to work. She wants intimate conversation. And she likes physically, a physical fit husband. So five out of six ain't that. <laughs> right, brother? Her love language is quality time. Uh, every 15 minutes a day, I got I to gotta gotta talk to her. She has to look at me in front of me. Not on the side, not in the car, but looking at each other. Right? And she don't want me to fix it. She just wants me to listen. Right? That's what, that's what we have to do. This past weekend, my wife and I went to Mountain View Vintage Market in Bedford. I noticed one thing. We, we, we both noticed there wasn't a whole lot of husbands there. A lot of women. But not many husbands. Why is that? When we were dating, we couldn't get enough of each other. We would never leave each other on a Saturday afternoon. But now we know there weren't many husbands there. You know, there weren't many husbands that accompanied their wives. How many Saturdays do you each go your separate ways? When you were dating, you wanted to spend every minute together. Why did you stop? That's a good point. Keep pursuing your spouse. Pursue her like you did when you were dating. Yep. I love watching my brother's uh, my brother's uh, Facebook. Man, he's always doing something with his sweetie. I love that. That's what we got to be doing, man. We have to keep the endorphins hopping, don't we? Amen. That's our that's our job as a husband. Then we went to a clothing shop later, later that night, and I was watching her. She was trying on these clothes, and I was there. Oh, honey, that looks great. Yes, that's so pretty. Loving on her, activity, participate, giving my uh, my opinion, present. Not just, I was just there, I was helping her. We kissed. The ladies was there working, asked how long we've been married. I said, seven years. She says, man, I sure missed that with my husband. We don't do that anymore. We used to be lovey-dovey, but we stopped doing that. Men, it's your responsibility. But so easy in marriage to say, well, she's not doing that, she's not doing that. Do like Jesus did. Keep pursuing. That's right. Jesus never stops pursuing. He never stopped pursuing me for 50 years. Like I waited so long, I, I, I even started thinking, you know what? I, I know what it is. He didn't chose me. I, I wasn't chosen. I, I, I can't get saved. But then the Holy Spirit says, all those times I held out of those pews when Jesus was knocking, the Holy Spirit was knocking. All those times I held out of those pews. And I kept saying no to Jesus. 30 years with those fingers. She also commented on, on many people, let them oh, self go. My, my wife likes me to be in shape. We all have separate, different needs, though. Find out what your spouse is. Find out what your husband's spouse, your needs are. Husbands, I tell you, if you meet your wife's needs, she'll want to meet yours. But you've got to take the lead. Just like God did for us. Jesus did for us. Right? What an example Jesus is. When we are dating, we do all the right things, don't we? We pursue her, plan dates, dress up, and encourage and talk for hours. When we get married, we check the box and move on. That, that lady is the one that God gave you. That husband is the, way, the one that God gave you. Treat her with loyalty. Like you talked about as a priest. God chose her to be my helpmeet. My wife and I, we minister together. We go to we do men's groups, so women's groups. We like to do skits that really bring the, the gospel to life. Um, my eyes aren't good. That's why my print's real big, see, so my, my, my eyes aren't very good, but that's okay. I'm going to give it to Jesus 
and Jesus is my Savior, and I'm looking forward to Him returning any time, because what a day that will be. Amen, guys? Yeah. Uh, when, when, you're, when you are showing up in your marriage every day, working towards meeting your spouse's needs, then you are willing, filling her love bank. When you are living a separate life, not attempting to meet her needs, treating her like she is just there to serve you, you are taking withdrawals from her love bank. And eventually, she will become bankrupt. I've seen it so many times in marriage. In our church, I was like a youth pastor. My beautiful bride, my beautiful bride was the, uh, was, was the, the drama pastor in the church. We started meeting. We start meeting, doing, doing, doing a skit together. In public places. In public places. With yes. all the guardrails. Yeah. <laughs> well, in bookstores and stuff like that. We want to do it right. But you know what? We were in marriages that our needs weren't being met. And Satan capitalized on that. Little by little, we were doing things we would never think we did. Are we convinced? Were we convicted? Absolutely. Can I hide it under a rug? No. I got to be transparent about it. I got to bring it to everybody to show people. You know, my, my, my youngest son, Lance, just told me, Dad, thanks for being transparent. Thank you, Dad. That really helps me. When you're a father and your kids see what you've done, you know how hard that is to have that relationship? I mean, it just destroys the bond. I think of David... And Solomon and what he did and all the all the repercussions he had and all the consequences he had and the grandchild Jeroboam or one of them who almost was demonic. That's what sin does. Sin is evil. Sin destroys. We gotta flee from sin. Do everything we can to stick to to flee from sin. Satan wants you to think it's easy. You could just go on an autopilot, but do it God's way. It takes work, doesn't it? Anybody just get in the you know, marriage and let it go and whatever it takes. That's what Satan wants you to think. God says, it takes work. It takes, you, you got to do it God's way. You got to take the Bible literally. You got to read the Bible and pray. Be with around other people. I'm so, uh, in my 50 years of being a preacher's kid, I, I just, I, people never were, there was nobody transparent about their lives. So as a, as a preacher, you kind of think, man, does anybody have any problems? I can't do that. I'm not perfect. I sure can't be perfect. I wish back then they had a little life group like, like we have on Thursday nights where we can come together and, and, and confess to Jesus, confess to each other. I think that's important. I think that's important that we, we're open, we're real about maybe some of the struggles we go through. The first gospel message in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. She shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Amen. Mm -hmm. The first gospel message, brother, in Genesis 3. Jesus is going to, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to redeem the, uh, the Satan, he's, he's on the winning team, guys. As born again Christians, we are in the, we're on the winning team. Satan will be defeated, and the woman's triumphant seed, by the woman's triumphant seed, his name is what? Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. When we brag about Jesus and not about us, what Jesus did in our life, that's what the lost want to hear. You want to, if you want to tell someone about Jesus, like someone said, give your testimony. Tell people what Jesus did for you. Because it's all about Jesus. You know, I, I think of David and, and, the, and the, but the lineage of Jesus, you know, with the, that. But further on down, Jesus was born in the same lineage as David. He can use a, he can use a simple sinner like me. He can use anybody. Because without Jesus, I am absolutely nothing. So the most important thing, guys, is to make sure that we know that we're doing it God's way, not the world's way. 
sweetheart. Ephesians 5, 21, 23, sweetheart. And then 1 Peter, pumpkin. Do I have a pretty bride or what? Isn't she beautiful? Sweetie, you want to stand up and say that? Pumpkin? 21. Yeah. And further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, and as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, yeah. this means love your wives, just as Christ loved her, the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or a wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the Amen. same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies, for a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but free, feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church, and we are members of his body. The scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united in one. This is a great mystery, but it's an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Amen. So again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Yeah, and I'm gonna close with this. First Peter, First Peter, uh, the First Peter. What was that, three? sweetie? You had that devotion the other day. How husbands, important is that? Yeah, how important? In the is same it? way you husbands give honor to your wives, treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she's an equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. So your prayers will not be hindered. Right. I yeah. Have, Remember that? There it is. I heard Tony yeah. Evans. So the prayers will not be hindered. Men. We, we wonder why our prayers are not being answered. Maybe it's sin we haven't brought out the, in the light yet so we can expose it. We need to expose sin sometimes. Oh, we got to bring it out in the light. We can't cover it up. We can't cover up sin. Maybe that's why maybe our prayers are not being answered. God wants us to be transparent about what we've done. That can help others going through it. That's what the Christian life is all about. Amen. Doing it God's way. Right. Amen, brother. Amen. I, I, I love this guy because he's a child of the king and I love his preaching. And it's just a joy to be here today to brag on Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thank brother. All righty. If somebody can, huh? She's on her way. Can we get somebody to give up the prayer list? How are you? Yeah, let's see. Huh? I've already given it The prayer list? Yes. I've already done it. Oh, okay. She printed a bunch of them. Yeah, all right. That's good. Uh, did y'all get a list? Yes. We did. I think we did. Right. Okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah, we Here's for you. All right. <clears throat> While we're waiting on Don, I'm going to tell a little something that we did back a few years ago sure. on our anniversary. Uh, we wanted to have a little fun with the public, so we booked into this really nice hotel that had a restaurant on the premises, uh, and it, were, it was where you had to wait for your reservation. So we were in this beautiful room waiting, and we were dressed to the nines, and we started acting like nobody else was around us and that they couldn't hear us, and we were talking about how we had just flown in from across the country, and we'd been out with all of these different celebrities, and, and acted like we didn't care that there was anybody there, and people were scooting their chairs over a little closer trying to listen to who we were with. And, and I was just amazed at how straight of a face my wife was able to keep that evening. But we had a lot of fun. After we were done, we laughed about how they were just so, they sucked it right up, and everybody was leaning in to want to hear who we'd been with over that last weekend. Because we were really dressed up, and not everybody there were. And, right. and so it was our anniversary, though. We didn't say anything, but it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. But you had that one, brother. That prestigious mug. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and that's when I even had long hair. And that made, you know, they couldn't put two and two together on who in the world that was, you know. And we had her, I had my suit on, and she was all dressed up. Come on up, honey. Uh, before I wind up sticking my foot in my mouth here. You, know. you, you need this list. I got one. Roll you got one. Keep the spark alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Have Thanks to everyone. And thank you for a wonderful meal earlier, Jim. And Ann, I'll pick that all up for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes, I appreciate that. And uh, I'm sure y'all heard the youngins, the children in the back. So we had a ball. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, they play. They like, I said, y'all inside, boys. They just keep on playing. But it had a good time. I enjoyed hanging out with them. So we talked about, again, the frog. Fully rely on God. I remember, frog. <laughs> so they loved that and I did too. So we went over that and they just played. And no TV. I only got asked one time. Did they watch TV? <laughs> so they had a good time. I did too. Well, glad you're here tonight. I'm not going to be very long on this. Um, you should have a form. Thank you, Daniel, who gave this out earlier. On the back is our prayer request. It's part of the front as well. But um, what I like to do... Does anyone have any prayer requests before we go uh, to do our scripture reading? Go ahead, Jim. Oh, I got a good friend. His name is Dan Kaufman. Okay. Uh, I'd like to add him to the prayer list. He's a Navy vet, a Vietnam era vet that I met downtown at Monument Terrace mm -hmm. at the troop rally. Okay. And I was informed this morning that uh, he was uh, on his property the other day, was cutting down a very large what? limb. Wow. off of a tree, and about the time it he cut through, he slipped and landed, and it fell on top of him. Wow. Uh, he was very seriously injured. He's had one surgery, and he's in critical condition. Okay, so keep him in your prayers, Dan. Uh, Dan Kaufman. Dan Kaufman. Yeah, the mid-70s. Well, bless him. Um, looks there, uh, top here we got in-care facilities or homebound. Keep those folks in your prayers. Military, first responders as well. Um, them in your prayers. We're in the back, bereaved. Um, Kayla Blanchard has a co worker whose father had passed away. So keep that family in your prayers. Don't have a name. And anyone else? I'm looking. Okay. Yes, gone. Thank you. There is a lady. Her name is Lindsay. Um, she comes several times a week to help us. Yes. She has something wrong with her kidneys due to her diabetes. Okay. So we can just keep her in prayer. She's been in a lot of pain here lately. All right. Well, bless her. Uh, keep in prayers of uh, Reverend Greg Tyree, who's at uh, Gregsport Church, and he's cancer. So please keep him in your prayers, his family. Yes? Yeah, pray for Kathy. She's yeah. not doing well right now. Kathy, she's not. Uh, what appears to be a severe cold, but we don't know what's really going on. Okay, we'll have to keep her in prayer. Um, Bill Linda Lewis, he had, for the ER, they had. Revival there at Wallens Creek, Kentucky, and spent, but did a wonderful time in the Lord and all, and so came to know the Lord and uh, he dedicated as well. He did, blood pressure gone up really high, got to the hospital, and was back home. So he was leading that down there as well. Yes, thank you. Um, pray for my son, Robbie. He was laid off at his job, so he was looking for another job. So okay. he's praying he can find one. Amen. I got him on infant. here. Yeah, he's got an infant to take care of, so yes. Uh, diapers and and all are expensive. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a, what, a week's plus wages in a day. Yeah. Yeah, like said, that's amazing on the price. Yeah, keep Robbie Gilbert in your prayers. Um, Heather's friend Chris, surgery and his finances, keep him in your prayers. Yes. Pray for yes. restoration with my only daughter, Sunshine. I haven't okay. seen in 16 years. Oh, wow. And then okay. salvation for my four boys. Okay. Joel. Can we search again? Yeah, Trevor. Trevor. Uh -huh. Joel. Joel. Brody. And Lance. My sunshine. Sunshine is a born again Christian. Yeah. I haven't seen her in 16 years. Wow, okay. Well, they're great names. Definitely keep them in your prayers. I'll add them to your list. Thank you. you yes. Yes, our friend in Cincinnati that had surgery. Yes. Keep him in your prayers and his wife. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, Jeff and Diane. Okay. Jeff and Diane. Jeff with G, not Jeff. Okay. I'm sorry? Yeah. 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 
Libra. Okay. Libra. Brit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just a Libra. <laughs> I heard Liebrick, was it attorney Liebrick from Lynchburg? Great guy and his wife. Keep them in your prayers as well. That name just come to mind. Um, uh, anyone else? That's on your heart. Sure. Uh, yes. Keep Norm in your prayers. He's dealing with a lot yeah. of um, different things and a lot of choices that he's trying to figure life out. Um, yeah. He might have an opportunity to be going to Kentucky soon. Okay. Um, cool. So definitely keep that in prayer and make sure that you know, it's God you. Yes, indeed. Amen. All right. Um, let's see. Like, so we've got some uh, praises and updates here. Uh, material needs on the list here. Candy and Shane's uh, truck is in the shop. <laughs> so we're trying to motor. Keep that in print it all works. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. A missions group. The Christian's mission is on. Yes. A lot going on in there. Pray for um, more space. <laughs> yes. Toys and items. And I'm also starting to work as well, so if anybody wants to come to help that there's more than just the Christmas that's going on oh, yeah. for an hour or two, okay. just let me know. Okay. Alright, yeah, keep that in your prayers. Um, let's see, I'm trying to catch my names here. Um, food bank staff and workers, there's a food bank van, a little bit of problems, but I think it's got repaired, so I'm thankful for that. And I'll keep them in your prayers as well. Um, all the different ministries that's going on here. A lot going on. <laughs> um, Looking, um, Norman Hess. I have him up there and under the um, Salvation I've Spoken and other. Um, these are the ones that some of the ones that I hear that I be here tonight. I'm gonna sick out some of those bug is going around. Keep them in your prayers as well. Quite a few out tonight. Quite a few out, yeah. Yes, I see. Um, let's see, praises like say Ernie, uh, he's a U.S. post worker, has cancer, things are. He's getting infusion. Last week, last week we heard about him. He was able to work, so thankful for that. He's able to work. He's able to work, yeah. Continue to pray for Catherine Marie. I'm on the praises and updates. Uh, Lenny and Annette Glazer, they're doing much better. Continue to pray for them. Danny Anderson, there he is. Yeah. Doing well, amen. Jonathan Morrison, employment. Yeah. We're thankful for that yeah. job. Yeah. Um, Jody via Heather, her friend is better. And I'll keep her, Jody, in your prayers. Wendy is better. She has a better teaching job coming up. Amen. This is a lady in Indiana. She's already doing it. Already doing it. That's right. You did that quick. She had um, hip surgery, and then she's going to have uh, knee surgery in December, but her job improved right in the middle. <laughs> so thank the Lord. Uh, uh, Dr. Ricky was talking about early last week, uh, less appointments with the uh, kidney doctor. Praise God for that. According to his doctor, you don't have to go. Um... To the appointments, it's meant no, that's appointments. Um, Don Ash has been with us over six years. <laughs> yep, it was six years, uh, yeah. just a few days ago, for me and Danny. Yeah, amen. That's yeah. crazy. I Lord. just thank God that we just didn't give up on us. I didn't give up on us. Well, up on us. <laughs> God is good, amen. amen. And visit uh, various businesses um, are letting us put up Christmas boxes for the missions to help with children. So we're thankful for these businesses. All right. And when you had a chiropractor there on Timberlake, it donated food boxes. We've been able to spread them around in the different missions, ministries. So we're thankful for that, as well as many other things. And uh, so I'm glad you're here. Do you want to have anything else on the bottom of the heart? Up here. Uh, we have a, an event, evangelical Christian that was elected to be house speaker of the house. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. I didn't know. I was wondering yeah. when that was going to happen.
Amen. That's your prayer. Yeah, I listened to him uh, giving his first speech today. It was quite good. Excellent. Yeah. Outstanding. That's your prayer. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like that. Yeah. He also led the house of prayer. Yeah. Amen. How about that? He was quoting there. scripture and everything. Yeah. He he's talking Lord. about he believed in the Lord. And he's right. only been a senator for six, seven years, I think. Six or seven he's years. Senator, I mean a congressman. <laughs> Yeah, I was very pleased. Yeah, praise the Lord. It's an answer prayer. Well, it used to be if you had any situation, you had a counseling thing, and then you right. talk to lawyers. Well, they tell you the lawyers you have counseling yet. Nobody called that in a long time. Yeah, so that's good. Just to follow that up, we need to vote November 7th. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Have some really critical things on the, on the ballot and positions Amen. on the ballot. Um, I understand important. that Amherst County Sheriff is, you know, running, but mm -hmm. I didn't know until recently that Nelson County Sheriff's office yeah. also Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. So all of them are running. So whatever yes, happens, this is their most time. likely we're going to have yep. two new sheriffs here real close to each other, yep. and that that can affect, you know, oh, much. <laughs> our, all, all of us. So uh, much. be in prayer about that. Yes, indeed. And, and I just got to have a little plug in here while I'm while I'm talking about that, uh, my son-in-law just transferred from uh, the Amherst County Sheriff's Department to Nelson County. Oh, okay. So, okay, so awesome. Uh, he's uh, working in the courthouse right now. And okay. He's going to be a, a highway trooper. Okay. The Lord of Prime, he's awesome. You have uh, also Commonwealth Attorney Ray. Uh, yes, Commonwealth Attorney is, is coming up. He's up too. In school board seats, right? In school board as well. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about language. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. He has that too. Go to the Virginia <laughs> uh, website and look up your county, and then yep. it's got everything that you get to vote on. Yeah. And you'll know when you find out where to go when you go. The local there. elections are very, very important. Yes. They can do more damage than a statewide one. And yes. so. Oh, yeah. This, and yeah. So you have the local and the state this year in a lot of areas. Yeah. Lynchburg region. Before Veronica explodes, she's got so much to say about it. Could you just introduce yourself or who you are? I'm the Republican do? chairwoman for the city of Lynchburg. Amen. Yes. So, yes. Thank you for being with us. Yes. That's why I said you're talking yeah. about language. Um, yes. yes. But, uh, <laughs> yes, so, and if you didn't hear, um, Governor Youngkin will be in Lynchburg tomorrow at 5.30 okay. in downtown and everyone, anyone in the public is welcome to attend. It's going to be at uh, Three Roads Brewery because he has that big van, that big bus he brings up. Yeah. So he has to do a big dead end too. street. <laughs> right. Fast. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a big dead end street with, which ends at the brewery. So he has all this room to pull the bus up and Excellent. have the pile there. So 530 tomorrow in the church. Okay. And definitely it's a, it's a critical state election. Don't sit it out. It's critical. You're, you're, we really need to get give Governor Youngkin a, a Republican majority again because a yeah. lot of things yes, happened, um, you know, in the prior administration when they controlled all three houses of the state that are really not good for our children yeah. in the school system. Education, no. Well, the school system, <laughs> the indoctrination of our schools, yeah. you can't tell the parents when yeah. their your child is being socially transitioned that you know there's no parental there's um, no uh, parental notification on that. We're trying to get that passed. Ladies. The, mm -hmm. the energy laws that go um, where Virginia is going to follow, Virginia is scheduled to follow California. Oh, so green. we're supposed to go right. to right. we're supposed to go so to emissions are required to require so electric vehicles. I mean, it's yeah. important that we are able to reverse some of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then somebody who's responsible for running every election, 45 days of early voting is way too much, and uh, we'd like to be able to get that back down. Yes. And, uh, yes. and we'd like to be able to get voter ID. Yes. 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 Yeah. Right. Just a few things. These are it's your fault. And fentanyl. I mean, did you know where, where, you know, fentanyl is such an epidemic. It is. And in, in Virginia, you cannot charge someone with yeah, murder who has sold a deadly oh, yeah. dose of fentanyl. But if they sell a deadly dose sure. of heroin, you can be charged with murder. But if you sell a deadly dose of fentanyl, you cannot. Mm. So that's something that we try to get past this past year, and that's mm. personal to me because, I mean, my son just had a friend that the kid that you never thought would try it. 
yeah. die in June. Yeah. You know, some of his co-workers had just talked him into it, and his mom thought he died right before his, four days before his 19th birthday. So basically so, she's yeah. saying we need to really pray for our politicians yes. and our leaders. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. We pray. need to sincerely, fervently pray because we pray so often spend more time by criticizing by, and less time praying and whether they're Democratic or Republican, it doesn't matter. We need to spend the time fervently, sincerely, Amen. without inhibition, without judgmentalness, praying for them. Because yeah. Jesus is the only answer. Because Jesus is the only answer, and if they were all to be saved, yeah. imagine what a better world have we been Oh, yes. 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 People would have the, what they call the biblical worldview. Right. Yes, we would. But just like the Jewish yeah. the Jewish kings that were not following God, right. mm -hmm. when the people prayed, God moved to the king. That's right. So he sure did. we got to keep praying. Yes, right. we got to keep praying. Move that heart. Amen. Well, thank you. Um, anyone else pray for Brother Joey? It's good to have you here with us tonight. Yeah, God, I'm camping, so I'm glad you're here. Pray keep, for him as well, his family. Keep praying for my healing. Yes. These knees seem to be getting worse. Sometimes a prayer. When you pray, things get worse before they get better. That's, right. that's, and, uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm yep. still waiting on the Lord before Amen. I take it. Put it in the hands of man. Amen. More bless you. <laughs> and um, I did have a Zoom meeting I scheduled with the, a group here in America, uh, a philanthropist teacher, mm -hmm. uh, another friend in Forbes magazine. We had a, a Rotarian club there in Ginger meet with my Rotarian group here okay. to do some economic development and education. Excellent. Uh, we're going to education grant. I think some of you have heard our sponsor of a blind child in Uganda. Yes. And uh, they have agreed that that's the project they would like to get a Rotarian grant for. That would be wonderful. To help the, the home for these yes, blind indeed. children. Yes, indeed. And it was a very good Zoom meeting. Good. It was supposed to be a half hour. It went into an hour and a half. Wow. So, that was a plus. Amen. Y'all keep that in your prayers. Amen. Anyone's heart's clear on that? Let us stand if you could, please. I did it to you if you're able to. Amen. Appreciate everyone being here tonight. And guests as well, thank you for being here. Um, it's uh, Psalms 111. If you got your paper there, I put it in big print. That's what I need. You know, yeah. And uh, I love this, this verse. It is wonderful, and then Candy is going to lead us in a song, and I appreciate what she does here for us as well. So, first, praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath shown his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Amen. God is over all. Amen. And I'm going to ask Dr. Kesh if you would close us in prayer and pray over these requests. And then Candy will lead us in a song. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for all of those that have come out tonight. I, I, I pray, Lord, you'd be with those that could not be with us for whatever reason. And right now, Lord, we want to lift up every name on this list before you. You know what they are. You know what the needs are even beyond what we know. And, Lord, we know you are able. Uh, we've seen it over and over and over again, and that's why we bring these to you, because we know you can fix these problems, and only you can. And we acknowledge that, and we thank you for that. Look upon each and every person that's here tonight, Lord. You know the heart. 
You know the deepest sorrow and the struggles that each one are in. And Lord, help them find you as their all in all in all of these situations tonight. And now, Lord, we just ask that as we get ready to close out this service, that everybody will keep you on their mind throughout the rest of this week. That they will not just talk the talk, Lord, right. but they will walk the walk. It is so very important. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you are going to do. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Andy, if you would please, and we will close with that. Uh.